Okay, so section 15.7 talks about the principles of angular impulse and momentum. Um, basically, if we apply an impulse, it's going to change its momentum. We saw that in the linear form. Um, we're just going to prove that for the angular form now. So we have so far that the summation of the moments about O is equal to h naught, and what's that in words? Um, well, that's the all the moments summed up about some point O is equal to the time rate of change of the angular momentum about O. We also know that we can define h dot as just the time derivative of h. So let's go ahead and put two and two together. And I'm sure after all the derivations we've done, some of y'all can see where I'm gonna go with this. Let's move that dt over to the other side. So I get the summation of the moments about O dt is equal to d, let's hold on to that o, uh, d h about o. So we can integrate, and let's do from some t1 to t2, and some, we'll just call it some 1 to 2, because we're, I'll stick h naught back in there, but we're talking about the angular momentum at 2, and the angular momentum at 1 after we integrate. So this gives me, we're going to just keep this like this. Oh, vector sign. Um, this is what we are going to call our angular impulse. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and integrate the other side and that would give me, after evaluating, an h naught at 2 minus h naught at 1. Okay, so there's a law for you. Our angular impulse is equal to the change in angular momentum. All right, so you can use this whole thing in that form, or we can bring this on the other side. So we get the angular momentum in its first state, plus some angular impulse or summation of angular impulses about O gives us some new angular momentum about O vector sign, vector sign, vector sign, and vector sign. Alright, that looks just like um, work energy theorem or impulse momentum theory for linear momentum, right? Um, the whole This whole thing, whoop, it's not a summation sign. This whole thing, that's my cat, that we're calling the angular impulse. Um, if you remember, we can write the moment as r crossed f. So if you don't know the moment, but you know the force applied and the vector r, describing its position, then you can use this for that. Okay, um, so what does this give us so far? This is the last of the theory for the section, or for the chapter. Um, we have the linear momentum in its initial state plus a summation of the 
linear impulses gives us some um, new momentum. And analogous to that, we have H naught or the angular momentum in its initial state about O plus the summation of all the angular impulses caused by moments gives us some new angular momentum. All right, and remember this can be just as simple as R, M, V if R and V are perpendicular. Um, and we can also break this down into components. So I can do this for the X direction and for the Y direction. Um, we generally only are rotating about one axis. And you'll only get one equation out of that usually. Um, okay, so something else worth mentioning is angular momentum is conserved if no impulse is applied or Im angular impulse is applied. So what does it look like? Well, it just says the angular momentum at one is equal to the angular momentum at two. And we can say that's the conservation of angular momentum. All right, and the same thing goes for if we had a system or a summation of angular momentums. All right, um, all the rest of the videos I'm going to do for this chapter are going to be examples. I'm gonna start with some examples to reinforce the stuff that I just taught over Angular, but then I'm gonna backtrack to linear momentum problems and problems that use energy and momentum problem solving methods because your tests will be chapters 14 and 15. And that is next Thursday. All right, you have all the tools now. The rest is all just practice.